Let's make the rainbow puff blanket. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the rainbow puff blanket. This blanket is very beautiful, but also extremely easy, and I can't wait to share with you how to make it. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, and you're not gonna wanna miss out. This rainbow puff blanket is just made using the aligned puff stitch that I just did a tutorial on. So if at any point in this video you are finding that you just need more explanation of the stitch, you might need to go deeper into the creation of the puff, the aligned puff stitch that I'm using to make this blanket, just go to this video right here that I created and it the whole video is just about this aligned puff stitch the actual stitch used to make this blanket. It goes into greater detail, slower, more explanation if this video isn't explained deeply enough for you. So just a little helpful tip there if you need it. The pattern for this blanket you can find in both the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, print off the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. I'll also put that link here at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. I am going to do my tutorial like I always do, so if you don't want to print off the pattern, you don't have to. Just follow along with me in the video and you will be okay. All right, once you're ready, once you have the pattern and you're ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need to make this rainbow puff blanket. The materials that you're going to need to make this rainbow puff blanket will include a yarn that is size four weight worsted medium, Aran 10 12 ply or 8 WPI. I used five different colors in the creation of this blanket just because when I looked at the colors at that time, there was no yellow, it was just kind of like an orange yellow. So I just went red and then the orange yellow then green, blue, purple. And that's what I did for the rainbow colors. When it comes to the exact yarn that I used for this project, I used Yarn Bee Sweet Divinity in the colors red clay, amber waves, Uncharted Waters, Denim Dream, and Mountain Views. Unfortunately, right before the making of this video, Hobby Lobby clearanced out the exact yarn that I used and I don't know if they're bringing it back or if they're discontinuing it. So what I did do for you is I found substitutions or alternative yarns that you can use where the colors are very close, very similar, and I think they will work up great as an alternative. I will put the links to both the substitution yarn that I think will work great, along with the names of the yarn that I did use in the description section and the comment section below this video. So all you have to do to get your yarn is click on the link, purchase the yarn, and have it shipped directly to you. When it comes to the exact amount of yarn that you're going to need to make your project, in the pattern, I did create a chart that has a list of all the different types or sizes of blankets that you could make along with approximately how much yarn it will take to make that blanket. So you'll have to get the pattern in order to get that information. But I also broke down the five different colors and how much yarn of each color you would need. Because what we're going to do in this blanket is we're going to control the color transition so the colors are solid and they don't run into each other. Each transition is a very clean transition to the next color and it makes for a very clean and really pretty blanket. The next thing you're gonna need is a crochet hook size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a yarn needle, tapestry needle to weave in your ends at the end of the project, and you'll need a pair of scissors to cut your yarn so we can do that color transition, that smooth color transition. You'll use your scissors a lot here. All right, once you've gathered up all of your materials, you can find all of these materials in the comment section and description section below this video, links to everything so you can get your hands on everything with ease and convenience. Once you have everything that you want to use to make your blanket, let's head straight over to actually making our rainbow puff blanket. The rainbow puff blanket just uses the aligned puff stitch to make the blanket itself. So how we will work this up is we start with the tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, 
and we are ready to go. This aligned puff stitch that we are using for the rainbow puff blanket is worked up in a multiple of two plus one and then plus one again for the foundation row and that extra plus one is that turning chain plus one. So I'm just gonna work up a small swatch in order to get through this tutorial with you. So in a multiple of two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then plus one. Now that's just the foundation row. And then we do another plus one for the turning chain. For row one, you're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, one, two, single crochet. Then we're going to chain one, skip the next chain, and single crochet in the next chain. Then chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the following chain. And repeat. Chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the following chain. chain one and single crochet in the very last chain to close row one. Great. All right, for row two, we will chain two. One, two. Turn your work. For row two, that chain two does actually count as your very first half double crochet stitch, and it will take the stitch space of the very first stitch space, all right? So what we will do next is find that chain one location. Here's the chain one. And we will make our HTC four tog, which just stands for half double crochet four together. So we will yarn over, insert our crochet hook in that chain one space, yarn over, pull through, pull that yarn so that way they're all kind of in line with each other. We have three loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook back into that same chain one space, yarn over, pull through, and keep pulling so that they're all in line with each other. We should now have five loops on our crochet hook. Keep going. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that same chain one space, yarn over, pull through, all the way through and straight up so they're all kind of in line with each other. Now we should have seven loops on our crochet hook. See that right there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We gotta do this one more time. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook back into that chain one space. Yarn over, pull through and keep pulling so they're all in line with each other, all of those loops that are on your crochet hook. You should now have a total of nine loops on your crochet hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Once you have nine loops on your crochet hook, you will yarn over again and pull that yarn all the way through all nine loops on your crochet hook. And that is your half double crochet for tog. You will chain one, hop over that single crochet stitch. We don't put anything in that single crochet stitch. We look for the next chain one space. So there's the chain one space. We'll make our next half double crochet for tog. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook into that chain one space. Yarn over, pull through, and pull all the way so they're in line with each other. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that same chain one space. Yarn over, pull through, and keep pulling so they're all in line with each other. What I'll do is I'll take my finger and I'll kind of hold it together as I keep going because you'll notice that they'll want to slide down and bunch into each other. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not enough, I gotta do that one more time. Yarn over, insert my crochet hook back into that chain one space. Yarn over, pull through. Now I have nine loops on my crochet hook. They're all straight and in line with each other. 
going to yarn over. Make sure my crochet hook claw is pointing down so I can make sure I glide straight through all those loops. Boom. And there I go. And then chain one to hop over that single crochet stitch. Now what happens if I make this stitch too tight? Okay, so let's give it a try. So often a big problem is we crochet too tight. Two, three, four. Okay, yarn over, pull through. Oh, put that back on, it's too tight. Come on, come on, come on. You can make it, oh. You're really struggling and what you end up do it, doing is splitting those loops. And then what happens, see I still, I'm still caught on something. It's really easy to catch on those loops pulling the fibers apart and that tighter loop will end up being a lot sloppier than these looser loops. Let's see if I can get in closer so you can see. So when it comes to this particular stitch, you really want to go slow. You want your stitches on the looser side so that way it's easier to accomplish them. Okay, that's why I pull the yarn up to keep them level. So I will yarn over, finding that chain one space, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, but then I will keep pulling, extending that stitch and giving myself room for when I need to pull my crochet hook through that loop. Two, three, Four. Okay, that was four half double crochets, but a total of nine loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, everything is loose. My claw on my crochet hook is down towards that teardrop shape of the loop. And you slowly glide that crochet hook through all the loops. That way, if it does catch, you can wiggle it a little bit and get loose of that loop. And then chain one hop over that single crochet stitch. All right, so that is your row two. And you just repeat that all the way across. Last chain one space. One, two, three, four, nine loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, but with your last half double crochet for tog that's in that chain one space, you only have one stitch left over for the row, so you end with a half double crochet stitch. You don't chain one and then half double crochet, you just go straight into half double crochet stitch. And what that will do is it will form a really nice 90 degree angle. Now what happens if we chain one first? Let's look at that. If I were to chain one first and then make my half double crochet stitch, what's going to happen is it's going to start to grow this way. Because when we turn, we want to work in the very first chain one space, and if the very first chain one space is located right here, our work is going to start angling that way. Okay, so when it comes to row two or any even number row that we're working these puff stitches, as soon as you finish, you close that puff stitch, you just go straight into that half double crochet stitch to close the row. There we go. All right, so to get onto row three, we will chain one. We will turn our work. We single crochet on top of that half double crochet stitch. We chain one, hop over that half double crochet for tog, finding the next 
chain one space, and we single crochet into that. And chain one, single crochet. Chain one, single crochet. And that's the repeat pattern for, for all of your odd number rows. And then at the end, you chain one to hop over that half double crochet four tog. You look for that chain two that we began row two with, and you single crochet in the second chain from the bottom there. So into the second chain to close row three or any odd number row. And that is what we're looking at. And that will also help provide us with a 90 degree angle on this side too, by ending with that single crochet in that second chain. All right, so let's work up one more row here. So we'll chain two, one, two, turn our work. The chain two does count as our first half double crochet stitch for our puff stitch row. Look for that chain one space and make our four or make our half double crochet four tog. One, two, three, four. There we go. Chain one, one, two, three. Four, total of nine loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, and chain one. Yarn over, pull through, and very last stitch here, we half double crochet. Boom, perfect. We're going into row, so that's one, two, three, four, row five. Row five is an odd number row, so that's a single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet row. We're gonna work this single crochet in the first stitch or on top of that half double crochet stitch, chain one, hop over that half double crochet four tog, find that chain one space, single crochet in that chain one space. And that is the repeat pattern for row five. Okay, chain one to hop over that last half double crochet four tog and single crochet in the second chain to close. Perfect, okay, so when it comes to the blanket itself, where we are controlling the color changes, I want you to color change on an even number row. We wanna end the, the color we just worked with, we wanna end that color on an odd number row to make it a lot easier for us to transition, okay? So once you have reached the row to change color, we will cut our yarn, leaving a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends. Yarn over, pull that yarn through, pull tight, and that secures that yarn, secures that color. Then we wanna take our yarn, we wanna take our project, and we want to flip it as if we were about to start a new row, okay? Grab your next color that you want to work with. So wherever you are in the project, whatever is the next color for you to work. Start with a tail long enough for you to weave in your ends. Create your slip knot. Attach your crochet hook. Perfect. You're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch space to attach your new color. So inserting your crochet hook, first stitch space, yarn over, pull through that space, and take that loop and pull through through the loop on your crochet hook for a slip stitch. Because we are about to work the puff stitch row, we need to chain two, one, two. 
That chain two does count as our very first half double crochet stitch. And then we just continue on as if nothing else changed. Find that first chain one space and make your half double crochet four tog. Two, three, four, yarn over, pull through, chain one, hop over the single crochet and half double crochet, four tog in the next chain one space. When it comes to how many rows of each color you will need before you transition to the next color, I will actually put a chart here at the bottom of the screen that shows the size blanket and how many rows that each color will have before you transition to the very next color. You're going to want to transition to the next color on an even number row, ending your color, your last color on an odd number row. So like here, I had the blue through row, so one, two, three, four, on row five, I finished off my blue color, and then on row six, I color changed to the new color. All right, so hopefully that will help you transition. But yes, check out the chart to guide you. I will also include this chart in the pattern so you can just print that off when you get the pattern along with a lot more information that I will help you out with. If you find that you need to attach more yarn to your project because you ran out of yarn, I'm gonna show you the invisible knot trick that I use all the time and I love immensely. So let's say you are crocheting on your project and you're running out of yarn. What you can do is you can take your new yarn that you want to attach to your project, have the yarn that's attached to your project go one direction, have your new yarn tail go in the opposite direction, bud those two yarns up against each other, take these two yarns right here, wrap them around two fingers, take that little tail you have right here, go over the two yarns, between your fingers, and have the little tail poke out towards your fingernails. Grab the tail, release your fingers, and slowly pull so it forms a knot right there. Follow the, your two yarns to the other side. Take two fingers, wrap your two yarns around your two fingers. Take the tail, go over the yarns between your fingers so the tail is coming out towards your fingernail. Grab the tail, release your two fingers, pull so there's now a knot on that side. Now you should be seeing two knots right here. Take the yarn that's attached to your project, the yarn that's attached to your new skein, pull those and you'll see the knots coming in towards each other and joining. And that forms a very, very strong and secure knot right there, okay? Take your scissors. You can actually cut the tails really close to that knot. And other tail. There we go. And that knot stays secure. It's not going anywhere. And then you continue on with your project. Do do do. There's my knot. Yarn over, and you just keep going. You don't even stop. You don't skip a beat. Three, four, yarn over, pull through. And then when you go back to look at that knot, can you see it? That knot is actually located right here, but it is so camouflaged in that there's no way you can see that. No way. So you don't have any ends to address at the end of the project. You're not wasting any yarn because you have to end at a side and then cut off and disregard any leftover yarn from that skein to attach a new skein. You just keep going. I love it. It's called the invisible knot. 
And if you want to use it, that's great. If you want to utilize your own method, go for that as well. I just wanted to help out where I could. All right, so that is the aligned puff stitch that I used for the rainbow puff blanket. The pattern itself turns out beautifully. I hope you enjoyed and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so what did you think of the rainbow puff blanket? I hope you love it. I hope you had so much fun and found the stitch easy enough to follow. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask those questions in the comment section below this video. Or if you go into the description section of this video or even the comment section where I have pinned a comment, all you have to do is click into it, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see all of the many ways that you can contact me, whether it be my email, my socials, or any possible way to contact me will be located there. And you can ask your question that way as well. I would love to be able to help. You may have noticed with this project, I didn't put a border on it. I think this blanket looks beautiful without a border, but if you are somebody that really likes to add borders to your blankets to give them that finishing touch, I will come up with something that I think would look great on this particular blanket. If you have any suggestions at all of a border that you think would look great, feel free to comment that in the comment section below this video or contact me and let me know what border you think would look best. I would also love to see pictures of your finished blankets, your finished products. And if you put a border on your blanket or not, I do have a private Facebook group called I'm Hooked for Hope if you'd like to join. It's a safe place for us to post pictures of our finished projects. It's also a great place to ask questions and it's a community where we can answer each other's questions instead of everybody just relying on one person and for all the answers. So I love that community. Everyone in there is so amazing and I love just being able to see the pictures of the finished projects that people have made. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you so much for crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys. Let's make the absolutely gorgeous and also extremely easy so you may the aligned puff stitch tutorial so cute